What is degenerative scoliosis? Scoliosis is a highly prevalent spinal condition that estimates close to 7 million people diagnosed in the United States alone with the condition. Unfortunately, scoliosis affects all ages, but the most prevalent type of scoliosis people think about is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis that is normally can be diagnosed between the ages of 10 and 18 years old when somebody's in their adolescent age. But I want you to understand very closely here is that it's not the greatest population of patients with scoliosis. We think it's somewhere between five and 7% of children have scoliosis. Uh, and again, in this age group, however, as every decade of life increases, the population increases with age. Therefore, somewhere around 50 to 60 years of age patients, this group can have somewhere between 25 to 35% of patients that actually have scoliosis. And this is because you're dealing with all the adolescent cases that were possibly not diagnosed and went through their adolescent stage and now dealing with the effects of scoliosis in the adult form. And then we're also looking at adult onset cases, which is what we want to talk about. Now, when we look at scoliosis, we know there's main types are determined by causation. And when we look at causation, we know that causation is directly associated with what we think is causing it. Now, when we talk about idiopathic scoliosis, which is by far the most common type of scoliosis, this is where we say there it, we don't know why it's happening. This is approximately 80% of all cases. There's no one single reason that we can determine why the patient is developing scoliosis. Now, when we look at the remaining 20%, these are associated with known causes. And the most common type are neuromuscular scoliosis. This is when a patient has a neuromuscular condition and they develop scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis. This is when they're born with scoliosis because, because some kind of abnormal vertebra that happens in utero. And then the last type is degenerative scoliosis, which is very often called as adult onset scoliosis. And this is when the spine deteriorates and develops scoliosis in the adult form. And this is the second most common type after idiopathic scoliosis, and it normally affects adults. However, the most common form of adult scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis now being treated in the adult form. However, the second most common type is degenerative. Now, degenerative scoliosis is the most common, most commonly diagnosed in normally patients over the age of 50. It's more common in females. And we think the diagnosis happens over the age of 50 because of menopause. And they'll normally the hormone changes that can result in bone density issues, muscle wasting issues, and all these hormonal changes can change the physiology of the body, which can maybe lead to this faster progression in this degenerative scoliosis cases. And like I mentioned, degenerative scoliosis happens because of degeneration in the spine over time. Now, very often it's, it's it's termed like it happens because of natural age-related spinal degeneration. However, I like to challenge that because if it was natural age-related, that means everybody would develop degenerative scoliosis if it was a normal age-related problem. What happens is that the, something happens to the spine that causes a small shift, normally in young adulthood, and this small shift normally remains uncorrected. And as a result of it, it causes the spine to start to degenerate asymmetrically in a very micro level at a very early onset of life, somewhere you know in their 20 to 30 year range or so. And what happens is that the spinal structures start to degenerate abnormally or asymmetrically, kind of like an unaligned car would, like one tire will degenerate faster than the other. It's not necessarily a tire problem, it's an alignment problem. And what happens is that it starts to affect the discs and the bones. And normally the discs are the first thing to happen and the discs are the, and the bones are the second thing to happen. And what happens is that these discs are becoming hard because they're not moving properly, they're not aligned properly, it starts changing the shape because the asymmetrical weight and pressure. And then this starts affecting the adjacent vertebrae to these discs and it's causing these discs and vertebrae to now shift further out of alignment relative to the rest of the spine. And this causes the spine to now start to degenerate because there's abnormal weight bearing. And degeneration is the body um, responding to the abnormal weight, causing one side to wear out faster than the other. Now the rate and level of spinal degeneration changes for everyone based upon certain lifestyle choices and the cumulative effect of, of, of weight and gravity and, and activity. However, there are some specific lifestyle choices that can definitely 
affect how fast your spine deteriorates. We know carrying excess body weight. We know not being active. We know consuming excessive amounts of alcohol or toxins like smoking. We know definitely chronic poor posture, repetitive lifting, repetitive trauma, sitting incorrectly, um, and also significant traumas can cause the spine to degenerate and move out of alignment faster. So when we look at symptoms that could possibly tell you if you have degenerative scoliosis, by far the easiest way to know if you have any type of scoliosis developing is I would say postural changes is number one. If you see any significant postural asymmetry from one side to the other, there's never a normal time that you should have a flat waist on one side and a very curved waist on one side, on the other side, or significant shoulder imbalance or significant rib development uh, arching. The 100% any postural asymmetry is a, definitely a sign that you could be developing a adult onset scoliosis. Other symptoms are back pain. By far the most common is, lum is low back um, back pain typically lift mostly on the right side more commonly, but it can be on the uh, on the right, but most commonly on the left because normally scoliosis goes to the left in the low back. It can also cause left leg pain, left radiating pain that goes down to the left leg, but it can also be right depending on where the scoliosis is, and it can also be upper extremity if your scoliosis is uh, higher. Also stiffness. A lot of patients that have degenerative scoliosis, they feel stiffness and tightness in area, limited range of motion in certain areas. Of the spine and they feel like they're kind of compressing. This idea of losing height or compressing could also be a sign that degenerative scoliosis is developing. Now, not only can all these symptoms be associated with degenerative scoliosis, but these symptoms are normally pain related and posture related. But unfortunately, as the spine deteriorates, it can start affecting many other systems of the body because as the nerves go through the spine and exit out into the body, it affects the environment of the nerves. And as we know, the spinal cord and nerves control the entire human body. So when you affect the nerve system in a negative way, it can lead to more things. It can lead to bowel issues, digestive issues, pulmonary issues. It can lead to many other things that we're concerned about because once you start to affect the integrity of the nerve system, you start to affect every other system. Now, when we look at degenerative scoliosis, how is it treated? On a conservative approach, the idea here, number one, is to stabilize the progressive nature of uh, adult scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis increases the rate of progression as the curve gets bigger. And there's only one prognosis that once we see degenerative scoliosis start to develop and become significant, that untreated, that the curve will continue to worsen. And as the curve worsens, so will the pain and, and symptoms associated with your scoliosis. So the first thing is to stop progression. Second thing as we're stopping progression is that we want to improve the size of curvature to help improve patient's pain and function so they can feel and function better. And then lastly is to stabilize that reduction. So stop progression, reduce the curve, and then try to hold that reduction is really the general management. Now, when we look at the, what we can do, we definitely know that patients that experience degenerative scoliosis symptoms like pain, they normally go out to chiropractors, massage therapists, some type of physical type of therapy or medicine or chiropractic, and it tends to help them with pain. And even though this is important to help people with symptoms, we think the most important thing is to reduce the size of curvature because stopping progression and dealing with it on a structural level is by far the most important thing. So we recommend is very condition-specific chiropractic care working on a structural level to reduce the size of curve. We also recommend specific structural physical therapy and scoliosis-specific exercises that not only apply to help decrease pain, but really decrease the size of curvature by increasing strength and muscle support around the spine. We also recommend corrective bracing depending on the size of curve. This can also be used to help improve pain, but we also use it specifically to help improve the structure of the spine and the symmetry of the body. And then of course, home rehabilitation, which is normally customized for a scoliosis patient to continue to help stabilize and, and deal with the scoliosis progressive nature. When we look at degenerative scoliosis, we know there is a certain amount of degeneration that we can expect, but this typically this degeneration is symmetrical. When it's when degeneration becomes unsymmetrical, or asymmetrical or starts occurring more on one side than the other, leading to a scoliosis de uh, degeneration. I do not consider this normal. I consider this an abnormal rate of degeneration leading to a degenerative scoliosis. Now, regardless of age, severity, we always work on improving the condition by stabilizing, reducing, and stabilizing again, because we know scoliosis is always a progressive condition. So therefore, the best time to start treatment is always sooner.
or now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.